Hi, my name is Jay Nichols, and I'm a marine biologist, a sea turtle lover, and the author of a book called Blue Mind. And I want to tell you a little bit about what Blue Mind is. Uh, I personally believe that if you're an ocean advocate or a water advocate, you should have this concept in your toolkit. The phrase Blue Mind simply refers to the mildly meditative, relaxed, calm, cool, collected, creative, curious, compassionate state that we move into when we spend time near, in, on, or underwater. We're going to make sure you understand how to put Blue Mind into action as an ocean advocate. Blue Mind originated as, as an idea to describe the set of feelings and we, as scientists we wanted to understand how we change physiologically and chemically when we're in the presence of water. And so through a series of conferences and summits, we describe the, the full sensory experience, the full cognitive, emotional, psychological, social, and spiritual experience of water. And this idea of Blue Mind has evolved into uh, a movement of movements. We call it a groundswell. And has given us a set of practices that we can use anywhere we are in the world, uh, really, literally, with any kind of water, not just the ocean. So wherever you are, you can practice Blue Mind daily. Once you understand what it is, once you understand how important it is, not only can you practice it, but then you become an educator. You can become an ambassador for Blue Mind. And again, we think this is an incredibly important component uh, of your ocean advocacy toolkit, not just for your own personal health, but for those around you, and by extension for the health of the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, and all of the waters of the world. So really the best way to understand Blue Mind is to begin with Red Mind. And Red Mind is the new normal. It's the state that we're often in uh, throughout our days. It's we're more connected, uh, we're more distracted, we're more informed. We've got information coming at us all the time, day and night even. Our sleep is monitored, our steps are monitored. We're never more than a few clicks away from all of our friends. Uh, this technology has created this, this new normal. And then you add to that, you know, the economy, the political backdrop, all of our concerns about the environment. And we're living in a red mind mode. If you stay in red mind too long, you will burn out. And I know you may not feel like it now. You may feel like you've got boundless energy and no fears. But trust me, if you stay in red mind too long, you will burn out, you will break down, you will experience possibly mild, if not severe depression. We don't want that. That is called gray mind. So if you're in red mind too long, you will end up in gray mind, that, that burnt out ashes of the fire. That's not good. Gray mind is useless. Red mind is incredibly useful. So you wanna to toggle between red mind and blue mind, not red mind and gray mind. So how do we get back and forth between red mind and that state, that calm, creative, collaborative, compassionate state of blue mind. Well, water is our best shortcut. Water is the best way to do it. Along with music and art and all the other things you love to do to relax, uh, water is the, is the ramp to that mindful, connected state of blue mind. So let's imagine someone who is fighting hard for their ocean and you're, you're working day and night your sleep schedule has decreased, you're so connected, you're on social media, you're answering emails, you might even be uh, being interviewed about this, thing. and you're getting kind of worked up, and that's your red mind mode at work for good. Uh, but you're in a fight or flight response all the time, and that's normal, that's, that's how we're made. But if you stay in that place, if you keep just grinding hard for the things you love and care about and fighting, fighting forward, uh, without taking a break and stepping back and getting to your water, you will eventually feel that gray mind seeping in. You will feel your creativity slipping away and you may even start to lose compassion and empathy because you're so much in that, that red mind fight or flight mode. So that's about when, if you start feeling that way, you wanna take a step back, look around and look for your, your blue mind outlet. Look for the water that you can go to. Don't bring your smartphone disconnect, go there, jump in the water, swim in it, dive in it, float in it, 
uh, or just sit and look and listen to it. Um, and it may, may be that your water is not even real. It could be virtual water. It could be your artwork. It could be a film that you love. Uh, it could be music. So whatever your water is, use it every single day. And that will bring you back into that blue mind mode, ready to fight harder and more effectively and more creatively for the things you love the most. You may be wondering, how does this blue mind thing work anyway? What is the science behind it? If you understand your blue mind, you have this superpower that you can use for your entire life starting today all the way through your, throughout your life. So when we step up to the water, what we see gets simplified. All of the noise and crowded stimulation is simplified. So we get that bandwidth back from the visual areas of our brain. Auditorily, what we hear gets simplified when we're at the water. We hear the sound of the creek, the waves, the running water, the waterfall, the fountain. And so what we hear gets simplified. And then if you get in the water somatically in terms of your body, your input gets simplified yet further. And so you get all of that bandwidth back and your breathing rate starts to slow, your heart rate starts to slow, your, your skin temperature cools, you begin to relax, and you don't just fall asleep, your brain moves into a different state of mind, which is much, much better at creativity, at feeling compassionate about getting out of yourself, of connecting with others, connecting with bigger ideas, returning to your purpose, and when you're in that mode, your body naturally heals better because the cortisol level drops, the stress hormones drop, and those stress hormones get in the way of healing. So in that blue mind mode, you're simply a better version of yourself. You're restoring yourself. You're putting the pieces back together. You're healing your body and your mind so that you can be a better ocean advocate and a better ocean warrior out in the world, which needs you to be at your best, absolutely at your most creative and your most connected. So you may be thinking, wow, Blue Mind, this is so incredibly obvious. Everybody must understand this. It's, it really is an intuitive idea. And in fact, it's been around for all of human history. If you look throughout literature and art and poetry and sacred spiritual texts, you find that every tradition, every culture in the world refers to Blue Mind in one way or another that water is healing, not just for our bodies, but also for our minds. It's good for our physical and our emotional health. And that is a universal truth that we've seen throughout all human history. Now the question is, how do I practice Blue Mind daily if I, if I don't live near the ocean, if I don't live near a river or a lake? And the answer is actually quite straightforward. There are four major kinds of water that we, we talk about. The first is the wild water. You know, the places you like, may like to go on vacation if you don't live near them. The getaway, um, the oceans, the lakes, and the rivers. Sometimes you're lucky and you may have one down the road. You may be able to walk there or ride your bike or take a short drive. Uh, if you're super lucky, it might be right out your window, depending on where you live in the world. But it's the lakes and the rivers and the oceans, the wild waters, that give us access to our blue mind. As long as those lakes and rivers and oceans are healthy, as long as we take care of them, they're available to give us this feeling of blue mind. Then the next big category is the domestic water, the water that's in your home, in the sinks, in the tubs, in the showers, in the hose outside, maybe if you have a sprinkler. Getting in your shower, getting in your bathtub and practicing blue mind is one way to do it and it's available. We kind of forget that, but you should practice Blue Mind in the shower and the bath. Even when you're washing dishes, be careful to conserve water, but really enjoy it and be very mindful of how that water feels, what it sounds like, how precious it is, and how far it has traveled to come to you in that moment. The third category are urban water. So if you live in the city, you live in a big town, Pay attention as you walk around your town. There are fountains. There are water fountains for drinking. There are public fountains for display. Those are great places to sit and have conversations. They're great places to relax. Sometimes in the city, you know, when I was a kid, we used to open up fire hydrants and, and the kids would come all run in and play in the fire hydrants. That's, that's the urban water. It's the, the downtown 
water experience, which is a little bit different from in your home and, and certainly different from the wild waters. And the last, the fourth category is your virtual water. And those are the waters that are present even when there's actually no water. So those may be photography, maybe artwork, uh, beautiful films, music, prose and poetry, any depiction of water that doesn't involve actual water. That's your virtual water. And I'm not talking about VR headsets, any, any depiction, it could be a watercolor painting, it could be just a line drawing or a line of poetry that transports you back to that feeling of blue mind. And when we take these four kinds of water all together, the wild waters that flow around us, uh, the domestic waters in our homes, um, the urban waters that are in our towns and cities, and the virtual waters that are the depictions through art and music of the water that we love. We realize that we can practice blue mind any day, wherever we are. We can close our eyes and even use our imaginations to take us back to the water we love. So again, Blue Mind needs to be part of your ocean advocacy toolkit as ocean warriors and ocean heroes and as the front line uh, for solving these big problems. Do take care of yourself. Practice Blue Mind daily. Make sure you don't burn out. Make sure you don't end up in gray mind. Take good care of yourself and share this message with those that need it the most. And that's a lot of people right now. Thanks for listening uh, to this conversation about Blue Mind. I'm Jay Nichols, and I hope that you can take this information, these ideas, and build them into your practice as an ocean hero.